Hello and welcome back. Episode 33. 33. 33. This is like the most like Irish, Irish thing. 33. Ever, yeah. When you're away in like another country, there was like 33 and 33 tree and tree and yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. right, lol. Or top of the morning to you. Top of the morning. No one tea. ever says that. Have no. you ever heard no. someone say that? Seriously. No, you On the Simpsons, not. maybe. Yeah, but it's not. No one says but that. But this is episode 33. Double numbers make a wish. <laughs> Make a dish. Make a wish. Um, so we are back. It actually feels like a while since we've recorded. It because feels, it has been. It has been a while. But it doesn't feel like too long. It feels well, natural. We, we skipped. We missed like one consecutive week last week because I was away, guys, for the last three weeks. But we did have previous podcasts, like 30, episode yeah. 32 and 31. They were all up Pre-recorded, up. yeah. But So we haven't been here in three weeks. We haven't been here in three weeks, yeah. About three weeks. More, even three and a half, probably. Which is strange for us because we've been so consistent. Yeah. But don't get used to it, guys. Yeah, don't because it's going. We will explain why. Well, maybe, maybe. Listen to this episode. Listen to the end of this episode. Yeah. Like, when you make it to the like end of the episode, <laughs> we will. Explain all will be to revealed. You. Yeah, exactly. But um, we're back with a special episode because we are just reunited again. Yes, we are. We just did a gorgeous yoga session this morning. Mm-hmm. I took Orna through a yoga class. Yeah, it was great. A heart opening flow. Mm hmm. A bit of chest it. mobility. It was nice. I feel a bit like, ooh, I feel a bit airy fairy now. I can't tell if it's my hunger levels depleting oh, yeah, or yeah. <laughs> my, my sugar like... levels dropping. <laughs> yeah, literally. But we have a a cute episode. And hopefully, hopefully more tan as well. An informative <laughs> episode today. Um, yeah. yeah, one, can we just make the state the obvious that Orn is actually more tan than me for once? Mm. Orn's hair is blonde, mm-hmm. mine is brown. I'm very natural, guys. Took my extensions out. I'm thick. She's not. Yeah. She's a yogi. Yeah, like we've, we reverse roles. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going all natural and the one is kind of fake wrong. bitch. But this joking. is my real. Yeah. My real time. Yeah. So cute. But my hair is no extensions and no, like, this is my natural You wouldn't even know this though. Like, yeah, everyone's like, your hair looks so healthy. It looks so it long. Look so I'm healthy, like, yeah. God, guys, all those vegetables up in Ubud for three weeks. Yeah. It does wonders for you. It looks good. It's my so nails shiny. have gotten so long as well. They're growing out. Yeah, they're so long. You've Actually, had them on. <laughs> Five weeks now. So long. After this Longer, appointment. No? No, yeah, no yeah. Worries. After this um podcast, should I say, I'm going to get my nails done. Mm. Woo! What a life. What a life. What a life, guys. Um, so, yeah, I was in Ubud, well, near Ubud, doing my yoga teacher training course for the last three weeks. Mm. It was in. Yeah, sounds great. Same. I'll actually add it to a highlight on my personal Instagram if you guys want to check it out. It looks great. I, I actually, was in, yeah, I want to do it now. Yeah, I'd love for you it, to yeah. do it. I'd love for everybody that's listening to just like gently get yourselves into yoga, just get familiar with the poses and then go do a yoga teacher training because it was mental. It's a way well. of life. Yeah, it's a way of life. People think like yoga is the downward dog and mm. the up dog and the chaturangas and vinyasa flows but that's called the asana which is the practice like which is the the poses but yoga like yoga it means union so union between like mind and body or source and body or soul and mind like it's union between like your higher self and your lower (laughs) yeah your higher self your lower self like trying to get your you into a In place line. of living yeah from your higher self most of the time so like there's it's just ba- like when I said it's a way of life like yoga is like what you eat yoga is like how you treat others how you treat Do yourself, yourself. Yeah. like how you spend your days like your Isn't nervous like system is in yoga philosophy yeah yoga philosophy yeah. like this, this um sutras patanjali yeah. like all this listen to jay shetty's podcast <gasps> yeah like your do your da- dharma your samskaras your samkalpas there's all these like keywords that obviously you probably <laughs> if you've listened to pod yeah if you've listened to podcasts in the past you might have heard these words but now since obviously learning they all have so much more meaning mm. but honestly i think it's just like Obviously, everybody's entitled to live their life however they want, but I feel like this is a beautiful way to live, to live your life because it it thinks of everybody. Like, mm. no one could... If you lived your life this way, you couldn't possibly hurt anybody, you know? Or hurt mm. yourself, mm-hmm. like, with exercise, or hurt yourself with, like, diets, or hurt yourself with toxic relationships, or, do you know? It's just a very loving way to live. Mm. So, definitely would recommend... I did mine in House of Ohm in um, Ubud. Well... There's two of them in, in near enough Ubud. I'm just gonna say Ubud for the general population. But 
Um, yeah, I did mine house at home. Would definitely, definitely recommend it. It was just phenomenal. Great. Guys could not recommend Great more. To hear it. And I really would love like Orna to do one and um like we're talking about the nervous system and you're parasympathetic and you're sympathetic. Like it was just like way more more than yoga that we learned. Like yoga was like a fraction of it. And it's just like and your our food was amazing. We ate vegan, vegetarian for three weeks. The bonds that you make with the people on the course are amazing because you're with each other like from 5 a.m. in the morning until 8 p.m. at night. That's not how intense the course is, but you have like an, an hour and a half um, for breakfast, an hour and a half for lunch. So, But otherwise, it was pretty intense, but pretty amazing at the mm. same time. Lovely. But anyways, it's not a sponsored Lovely. video. Yeah. <laughs> this this is sponsored by Hey to Them. I wish. Lovely. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. But um, would recommend. And Orna is... Actually, no, we can't We can't reveal yet. We will reveal Well, I think end. we've already spoken about it briefly. Yeah. Well, you can, you can reveal a little bit. Well, I'm just going... I'm leaving on a jet plane. I'm going know. for a visit. Can I just interrupt this for a quick thing? Who has heard Orna sing, guys? Oh, lol. Who has heard Orna lol. sing? She is the freaking best. <laughs> Find Orna singing lol. videos lol. on, actually, reels on her personal page. You will. I'm embarrassed. Die. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> no, she is so, <laughs> so good at singing. Like, I honestly yes. just, when I was. Well, I feel a, like I can't sing like that all the time. It just, I have to be in the flow. It's yeah. when I'm in the flow. Yeah, of course. You know? Course, yeah. You know. When I was in like away, I was just playing her mm, think so. songs like all the time and like hyping her up to everybody that like all these people that I didn't really know that well. Of course, at the start, <laughs> I was like, you need to listen to my sister sing. <laughs> and the, the sad thing is, like, we won't see each other for like 12 weeks almost, 10 weeks, I think. Yeah, I said that to my so boyfriend I'll be, yesterday. I'll be playing uh, that music for a long time. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, bring out an EP, guys. I'll be, doing, I'll be on yoga, flows to your songs. Mm, cute. Yeah, it's going to be like. I'm going to Ireland for six weeks just for a visit, but pretty long one. Yeah. I went for four weeks last time, so I'm going for six weeks this time. Yeah. And then returning to Bali. Yeah, and it's so um, in May. In May, May, yeah. But it'll, it'll be good. And then I'm going away tomorrow. Well, you guys, so when you guys are listening to this, I'll be already away for two weeks. But then when I, the day I come back, Orna leaves, so... Yeah, I'm literally probably going to be in the airport in the departures. <laughs> yeah, and be I'll be coming arrivals. arrivals. But yeah. I'll be leaving... No, Orna will be, I'll be coming back into Bali and Orna will just have left. So I won't see her for two weeks because I'll be gone for two weeks. And then she's leaving for six. So that's eight, eight weeks. Eight weeks. But then you were gone for three and we've seen each other for two days. For two days, yeah. So in total, that's eight, nine, twelve. Yeah, twelve, right, yeah. We've seen each other for, we'll see well, each other for a total of three days in 12 weeks. Because we'll see each other tomorrow as well for a beach yeah. walk. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah, guys, you don't understand this bond. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a sister, no, you because know. I feel like if you have a sister, it if you know, you matter, know, or a best know. friend, or a brother, or whatever. it's just like you feel like you're never too far apart. Mm. You know, Facetime these days. Thank yeah. God for Jesus. Yeah. How are people writing letters and all? Christ, was. like dad. Yeah. Fair play. Miles, mm. miles away. But anyway, enough about us. <laughs> yeah, enough about me. Really, I feel like I fucking no, chat the world there. We are. We'll just get right into our first segment, which, which is, is diving, diving deep. deep. Cue the scuba. I need to always remember to breathe now because <laughs> I usually hold my breath and I'm like. <clears throat> um. So we did a little poll on the Instagram on the story on the room, and the poll was, "Do you know your attachment style?" And we gave three options. We gave avoidant, anxious, and secure. So avoidant, what's an avoidant touch us all briefly? They fear intimacy. So if you've, if you're familiar with friends, think of Chandler and friends. So it's like an insecure attachment style, but they would be fearful of intimacy. Like they are too dependent on them. They've learned to be so dependent on themselves that like they don't need anyone. It's almost like they they're so independent or else like maybe that from a child or else they've been hurt in a past relationship so bad that they don't want to get close to anyone else. So actually, I forgot to say, let's clarify what an attachment style is. Because people have How you form your attachment. So if you're in a people. relationship, like yeah. it could be like a friendship yeah. or it could be a love relationship. And relationship. Love and relationship. Yeah. And it's like how you form connect to that person. Yeah. And it, there, a lot of them are based off childhood. But then again, you can. So that's how your your attachment styles are formed How you from seen your parents love. Yeah, or, or like how the treatment uncle, you got from your parents as well. Or like how your parents loved you. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, you can also change your attachment style with 
Awareness. Awareness, yeah. Or else you can also develop say like avoidant attachment style. Yeah, so we gave like the avoidant would be like Ornish explained. Yeah. So you can be an avoidant attachment style. What's an anxious attachment style briefly? Where you think someone's gonna leave you the whole time. That's another insecure attachment style. You're like, they don't love me enough, you constantly need validation. Like you're almost come across as like clingy. Yeah. I feel like I could be a little bit I thought I was secure, but no, Yeah, I but as, your but partner could give you reasons in your life. Yes, exactly. To, to give you so like yeah. if your partner's out cheating on you every weekend, it doesn't mean yeah. that you're like My in an anxious attachment. No, not yours, but if you're <gasps> if a partner is out cheating on you every weekend, it doesn't make you an anxious attachment style just because you're yeah, wondering where they are and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, if you yeah, have yeah, your yeah. your gut your gut, you'll know as well. Yeah. Your gut brain guy is very important. Yeah. Um learn that in the course too. Yeah. Um so an anxious is like, yeah, you could, most of the time it comes across as clingy, but it actually is It's how, just fear that they're going to leave you. Yeah. Or like you constantly need to, to be told that you look a certain way or and like a lot of the you're, time you're comes, good enough as you are. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of the time an anxious one I think comes as well from not being secure in yourself. So yeah, not, that's what issue what it is. Sorry. Yeah. So not like loving yourself enough. So you don't have great self-esteem. So great you self-love, rely on the other person. So you like put all your, like a hundred percent of your validation or your self-esteem into that person. So unless they give it to you, you don't feel that from yeah, yourself. A hundred percent. And what's and a sec- it's easy to slip into that, I feel. Yeah, and what's um, a secure one? Secure is just, like, the healthiest one to be. It's, like, you're secure enough in yourself. You're able to love, give love, receive love, but then not rely too much on the other person. Or, like, it's just being secure in yourself and your relationship and not being scared that they're going to leave you and know that, okay, well, if they did leave me in a situation, I'm going to be absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you're just fully secure, and that's the one we will all aim to get to. Yeah, so, like, you're 100%... Uh, like in yourself so 100% loving yourself 100% happy on your own and that person just adds value to your Mm -hmm. life like they add an extra 20% or an extra 50 or an extra 100 but you don't rely on them for that full percentage to be whole I feel like it's easy so say at the start you could be a secure and then like say other things change in your life and then your life goes out of balance it's easy to slip into one or the other of the uh, insecure attachment styles because Mm -hmm. like say your picture isn't complete and then you were secure at the start but now maybe you're too over reliant on your relationship because you don't maybe have enough friends or mm-hmm. you don't have a job or you don't have something going on in your life it yeah. can make you either be probably more insecure and like say if like in a relationship where the male anxious. or oh, one partner is like um yeah funding like how, what do you call that providing mm. So you could be secure, but then like, your partner's providing and then you think mm. like, okay, without this life, like without my partner providing, I can't have this life. So then you like yeah, form an anxious attachment style that if they leave you, your life is going to crumble and go to mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. So then you rely on them anxiously because you're like, oh my God, if they leave me, like then I won't have a house to live in because they'll kick me out and blah, 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 yeah, blah. Exactly. So like you can develop it, like Orna said, through like fear and stuff. So there is like, say in the world, only two types of feelings like fear and love but like under fear is like anger the anxious is like fear of abandonment yeah so i think a and a fear of abandonment abandonment. and then under love is like security like self-love happiness and also like there's two headings when there's like loads of subheadings there like umbrella headings for everything but yeah like um it's like f- the anxious attachment style is fear of abandonment and that can happen like orna said a lot from when you were a child and someone right now i personally feel quite secure Dude, but my great. boyfriend gives Delighted. me a lot of reassur- reassurance is, yeah but then again like if that's what you need to feel secure and you're getting your needs to be met yeah genuinely i don't think that makes you a insecure or uh, anxious of that attachment to yourself you're not getting that like you know what yeah you so yeah like i personally feel like i am in a secure attachment to myself right now because my boyfriend and me are in a secure relationship. Like he gives me reassurance. He does everything like I mm. want him to do. And I'm joking. He does like, he makes me feel secure at the same yeah, time. I so I don't know if that's because like, if he was a different way, I wouldn't be. Yeah, but that's, that's. But it's hard, like we said, it's hard to feel secure if your boyfriend's not giving you the. If your needs, needs aren't being met. Yeah, of course. Mm. Yeah, 100%. And I feel like if your picture is whole at the moment, like you feel whole in a lot of yeah. areas of your life, it's going to make you more secure in turn of like all your relationships and the way you are in Foundation, your life. Yeah. Whereas like I'm saying, if you're a bit up in the air in your job, like you can then channel that into your relationships and then become anxious because you're like, oh, I just need some stability. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Normally like say if friends come to me for like advice on like, oh, my boyfriend's doing this to me and it's just really triggering me all the time. I'm like, okay, well, like I said before in another past podcast, I think if it's just like, oh, like he's, 
I think he's being off with me and I'm like, okay, look at yourself first mm. and see, is there anything trigger? Is there anything inside of yourself that you're like, are you comparing yourself to girls on Instagram lately and then you feel like you're not sexy enough so you don't think your boyfriend thinks you're sexy, but it's like you don't feel sexy in yourself. So then you're painting the picture. You're so like then you're projecting. It. You're projecting, yes, that's it. So that's the word we're all we all do it yeah we and like when I said like say for me I just come back from like three mm-hmm. weeks on my well not on my own own but like three weeks of something for myself so I was really able to like fill my own cup up there so that's why it's so my own yeah. foundation in myself is super strong so as a matter then as like a how do you say like a addition it no as a result of that oh, the rest <laughs> of my life is very foundationally secure at the minute as well mm-hmm. like because Guys, no, like my tattoo, the it all starts with you. 100%. So because I, my relationship with myself was great, yeah. every other relationship yeah. is good. 100%. I was having this conversation with mom, our mom as well, and I was like, if you're an empty vessel right now, say things in your life aren't going the way you want them to, or you don't feel satisfied, and mm-hmm. that could potentially be in your relationship or in a, in a factor of things, like in a few things, you cannot go to your girlfriend or your boyfriend and say, okay, fill me up. Because my base is, is is I have to do this work first. Mm-hmm. So in order for them to say, like, you picture it, in order for them to fill me up, I have to have filled myself up. Yeah. You know what like I mean? Like, you're a, you're a glass. So if I'm if I'm down to my feet, feet. and I can't be like, here, fill me up, and he, he can't do it, there's no possible way. Yeah, so I have where, to work on myself. That's where relationships know? then, like, become, like, problematic or, like, don't work out is because you're expecting yeah, your boyfriend 100%. to give you something that he just can't give you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, you're putting too much pressure on the relationship yeah. then as well, 100%. And I'd be probably like a bit like, not like that right now, but like, from time in, to time, in the it past. just gets like that. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? So, awareness is key here. Yeah. And it's good to know your attachment style. So I think like, awareness is key to know what attachment style mm-hmm. you are. And then know where, like, if you are an anxious attach- attachment style, you can like convey that to your partner and be like, look, I. I'm just a bit anxious sometimes like and then the more reassurance your partner gives you the more you release that anxiousness you know what I mean that anxious attachment style yeah. because they they know that your needs need to be met as an attachment yeah so say if you're anxious. like you've been cheated on in the past this is like what I've heard before you've been cheated on in the past mm. and your partner goes out and it's not their fault that your heart is racing when they go out like mm. they have done nothing to break your trust so mm-hmm. far but in the past say your boyfriend went out one night and this one night you remember so well yeah your boyfriend. ex-boyfriend sorry went out one night and he cheated on you and you kind of had a good feeling so your heart was racing that night that's going to bring that back the same emotions unless you fully healed that so to stop that you can be like oh will you just text me when you're in or you know just ask for that mm-hmm. bit of reassurance from your current boyfriend and then that would also help to break the anxious attachment style as well. Yeah, and then know? the more, like... But it definitely does all start with you. You can't keep being, like, texting, Yeah, texting, so texting, that's what I'm saying. Like, awareness to know your attachment style, but the first key to, like, mm. everything and anything in life always is you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like we just said there, like, you have to fill your own cup up first. You have to be, like, 100% in yourself and not, like, 50% you and 50% your partner. No, like, 100%. you need to be 100% as yeah. to, like, with you. And then, like, how people treat you in work will be on how you treat yourself and how you show up for yourself in work. Like, how your partner treats you is, like, how that you treat yourself. Like, if you're giving yourself the bare minimum, your partner could slip up, sorry, slip, lip, slip. <laughs> could start slipping and giving you the bare minimum because you'd like you barely give yourself like I say to Orin all the time like we accept the love that we think we deserve so yeah. if we think we deserve this amount of love because we we don't love ourselves that much then we're going to accept anything like about that standard mm-hmm. of love you know so it all starts with you guys and that's what attachment styles are stem and from what was and the, also your child what was the most popular one so that's what i'm gonna ask you okay next question that little ramble but that was basically the whole thing um the most popular one was probably avoidant no what yeah avoidant was 19 percent stop anxious was 60 percent oh and a secure was 20 percent i'm really I'm happy really for all you secure people at the avoidant that would be higher well i agree that Avoidance are probably so avoidant they don't know their avoidance. Stop. Tell me about it. <laughs> but anxious about it. people, a lot of people will be anxious because a lot of, their, like I said, there's only two main emotions in the world is fear and love and avoidant or anxious comes from fear. Avoidant comes so, from fear as well. Yeah, so a lot of people would be It's like they, they, fearful. their needs were met as they were younger so they learn to just overly rely on themselves so they don't need to 
Well, that's avoidant. Yeah, that's that's avoidant. So I'm yeah, saying well, like, anxious one. Oh. That, that's what I'm saying. It probably is a bit of anxiety as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that yeah. So so anxious one because a lot of people are like, oh, I need my boyfriend. If my boyfriend left me, my life be over. Mm. I actually sent a really good post to my friend, which I'll probably read a bit of it out. So someone said, I think I'm anxious avoidant, weirdly enough, depending on the person. So like anxious avoidant, so a mix of the two. Would that be like Like you just explained. That's disorganized avoidancy then, because it's like both, I think. That's what it's yeah, called. Yeah, but what did you say just there about the anxious and avoidant? It's like you're, you're, you're so fearful that they're going to leave you, you just avoid it at all costs. Yeah, exactly. Basically. That's, that's disorganized avoidancy, yeah. Someone said, deny, 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 so that'd be avoidant. That'd be avoidant, yeah. Someone said, I'm an avoidant, anxious attachment style. Mm, both. A mix of all three... I mean, yeah, it depends on your partner then. If they're giving you security, then you're going to feel secure. But it's also again. not always down to your partner. That's why I think it's just about your life in general. Yeah, like but I mean, said. it could be down your yeah, partner in that life yeah. part. Mm -hmm. We often range between the three, don't we, secure and anxious. Yeah. Someone said all three. Someone said anxious avoidant. Someone said secure for romantic relationships, but have been an anxious friend sometimes in the past. That's Aww. good as well. Yeah. Could be like past trauma in that aspect, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it also depends on, like like we said again, like how your parents loved, how your parents loved you, how you saw love, how if you would like young relationships mm -hmm. when you were a teenager, how those boys How treat, your first relationship was, if you healed from that, you, you didn't, you know what yeah. I mean? I'm going to sneeze. Ooh, uh -huh. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> the fearful avoidant is a combination of both anxious and avoidant. People with fearful avoidant attachment both desperately crave affection and want to avoid it at all costs. They are reluctant to develop a close romantic relationship, yet at the same time, they feel a dire need to feel loved by others. Which kind of relates back to what were you saying? something that we have, uh, a red flag that we have today, actually. But I can't remember, I can't remember the post. I'll try to share it. And oh, yeah, the red flag. Remember. Do you want to read the red flag? No, but I'll, yeah, I'll read it after, but we're still on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down there, hold your horses. It's about two segments away as well. But um, the <laughs> post was like a anxious style versus a curious style. And it's like a girl, like a cartoon girl, and she's in bed. And she's like, how will I ever oh, yeah, go on story, if they... I think I just sent it to you maybe or something. Oh. How will I ever go on if they leave me? And the girl was like, I am whole on my own. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like... The opposite kind of... Yeah, oh, but I'll share it on um, Sarah Tone and Sister's if I remember and put on the stories. Mm. But anyway, I hope that was insightful and gave you a little... And also, there's quizzes you can do online. I oh, think okay, you yeah. probably all know anyways, but just literally Google um, attachment style quiz and you'll find out what you are. So for our next segment today... It's stuck in the mood. We it? will... Yeah, it is stuck yeah, in the mood. Well done. Woo! <laughs> well, I actually... Someone sent like a funny story in, so we just said read it because it is a bit of a sticky situation. Sticky situation. Yeah, actually, remember I got one of these things on the weekend. Obviously, no. What things? In context. Oh, I'll put in context in a minute. Okay, before, before a date, I put on... Af I put aftershave all over. All over where, may I ask? Anyway. <laughs> the night Probably. was going really well and she went down on me. <laughs> great love that love that for you and glad the night went that well that she actually made it there <laughs> she took a massive allergic reaction her lips oh ears God. and her face were so swollen and i had to drive her home in the back seat of the car because she was so embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> oh do you ever say like that's so raven episode when she like explodes and her lips and all her eyes are oh my god yeah i remember that that's like a memory and love so that's what orna meant she had that on the weekend orna had allergic reaction well. she got not not for that reason she got a bit not by a bug for that reason i got bit on the lip and then it went on boom. the lip yeah yeah and, um, yeah but um I wonder how do you have an allergic reaction to aftershave? I've heard, I actually, so there's this segment on the radio ages ago, this is like literally, I'd say about five years ago now, and they were saying that some people are so allergic to perfume and aftershave, they cannot, like, they have to inform the plane, say if they're going to France or Spain on the plane yeah. or something, the airplane, they have to tell the people before the flight, like, don't, oh. no one wear aftershave, no one wear perfume, because That's like, the yeah, person actually nuts. blows up, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <gasps> you know you said? I'm, I'm thinking that you said this hurt person blows up I'm thinking of like imagine like the plane was crashing you need a water raft <laughs> <laughs> to spray a bit of perfume on them and then blow up and then you can use them as a life jacket <laughs> it's like what is that in Charlie and the Dracula oh yeah by the yeah, board yeah, and yeah. she blows up oh but um God. that's scary I fucking hate I'm so sorry or do you ever see those like um like, really the rejection of people get lip filler and they have an allergic reaction to lip filler. And that's the worst because you can't get it out. Like, it's already in there. Like, and it's... But I think... 
How long do allergic reactions last? Well, I think you take a bit of antihistamine. Mine didn't last that long, but I, I got bit the other day and I was like unbelievably itchy and I was like irritated and I was like, mm, this is an like allergic ants. reaction right now because how much I'm itchy. And my boyfriend was like, just go get some antihistamine. And I was like, oh, oh, whatever. He's like, you're fine, you're fine. And it's probably just a, a dry patch on your leg. And I was like, no. no. And then my eyes started going, pff, like so. No, itching is like honestly a form of torture. If you, <gasps> if you have an itch and you can't scratch it. Straw. Sometimes like we do like meditation or like a shavasana, like you know. Well, I know the I end was getting of, itchy when you were doing that. Yeah, really at the end of like a thing mm-hmm. and at the end of a yoga session, and you could be lying on the ground and a bug will call, crawl on you. But obviously, your sometimes your mind makes you think that bugs are calling you to try get you out of the out of the like light stillness of the pose because it wants to get like get you up and get you distracted again. So sometimes you have to res- resist the urge to itch. to itch or like wipe something off your leg or something because you're meant to stay like not force yourself to stay in it but like your mind can also play tricks. You just need to be aware that your mind could be trying to get you out. Yeah, so actually. you have to like almost and then when when you do resist the urge it goes away yeah, actually. It does, yeah. But it's like torture if like you're it's almost so, like resisting the urge to follow like a, a stupid thought, you know Yeah, I mean? exactly. That's what yeah. it's trying to teach you. Um like God. Was there an ant on me earlier when I was yeah, like, there was an ant on me. I pulled off. I was lying on the floor. I was like, I mean, there's an ant on my arm. And then that's the thing, because we were in Ubud, we were in the jungle, so like there'd be stuff crawling over you all the time. You were like, snakes. this is my mind, or is this actually <laughs> real? There was a few snakes, a big, huge python. Huge python. And a girl was on the back of her go deck. Where? In, in where you are, yeah. And one of the girls was on the back of her go deck, and the go deck was like, we can't cross because there's a huge python in the middle of the road. So he got off his bike and took a stick out of the bushes, went in the bushes, came out with this huge stick, like the same <laughs> length tree. as him, and started like poking the, the <gasps> python back into the bushes and the python sw- um, swarmed off. It was like the same height as me, the, the snake. It was oh, huge. Oh my God. I know, man. It's, it's mad because you don't really see them. You see some snakes here, yeah, yeah, every now ones. and then, but... Yeah. Fucking hell, that's scary. But, um, and there was like a, I'm pr- nearly 100%. We went down to a water pond, I'm pretty sure it was a crocodile, like an al- like a small little crocodile in the water with us. Because it ran, and then it tried to climb up the wall and fell off the wall and smashed back down, and then ran back up the wall again. It was huge. It was like the half we size of the table. We seen a snake in the water. You know the black and white snakes yeah, that are water snakes? Ulu. They're poisonous. Yeah, yeah I remember we seen that in Ulu. Sorry, guys, I don't know how it's turned into yeah. National <laughs> Geographic over here. <laughs> But when we were talking about... <laughs> David Attenborough. What were we talking about? Oh, this large reaction we got on snakes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I mean, I see the correlation. If you got bit by a snake, you'd have you'd a massive dead, reaction. So dead. much so that your heart would stop. <laughs> <laughs> if it was poisonous. But, oh, um, yeah, an itch. I think they used to torture people, like, it's in the bit. Roman days. They put, like, jam on them and then bury them and then get the ants to bite them and you couldn't itch yourself because your hands were buried and the ants would just bite your face and all on your neck and everything and you couldn't itch them away. So that was really dark, wasn't it? Jesus Christ. Yeah. I remember my friend Zoe, she got like bit by ants all over her legs and she had like this mat- like this b- big patch of scars oh on her God. legs when I first met her. I've she never been stung like never been stung by a bee or anything though. So I don't know who I've been stung by a wasp. But the worst reaction I think definitely is peanut allergies or those type Jeez, of food ones where you have to get like the EpiPen. That's scary as well. I shit myself. Yeah. And like, sometimes like if the restaurant don't... they don't understand sometimes. Yeah, if the restaurant don't fully speak English, you're like, I have a no RG and they're like, okay, and they give you a satay. Like, you're fucked. Yeah, like, remember that happened to someone we know? He got protein shake and he was like, is there nothing in this? And they're like, no, no and there was, was almond milk in it. Who was it? <laughs> who was it? Remember? No. I'll tell you. Just go like that. Oh. Really? Did he have to use the EpiPen? I think so. Fuck. Or like he's puking and all like. Fucking yeah. hell, mate. Um, but poor girl who got the reaction. Yeah, sorry. Hope she took candy. And she had to drive home the backseat because she was so embarrassed. Oh. Imagine you went home to your parents or like something. Your mom like, what happened? You were like, and she knows that you're only at like. Well, I just say the boy on yeah, the day we had after shave on Yeah, that's true. And his, why, his person. But why do you put it on his dick? Oh, that sting. Like, oh, I, I don't know. He obviously put on sick because like, obviously knew he was getting his bit, which is even worse. <laughs> Girls, awful. we can never put aftershave down or perfume down there. You know why? Get a massive yeast infection. And UTI and everything. <laughs> UTI, BV, like the whole lot. Like <laughs> change in the pH yeah, forever. No Fuck. Way. That so would just mean. be a disaster. I know. Ew. I wouldn't do that. I think when I was like literally a kid, I put cherry gel in there and I was screaming. <laughs> I was about five, I'd say. <laughs> about seven to five. Mom was like, what are you doing? Oh. I was like, ow. 
<laughs> that hurts. I got a UTI yeah. from doing that before. Yeah, yeah. you can't. Because you change the pH. Like, ah! And then bacteria Stop can it. form in oh, the pH. Oh, yeah. Like our, our lady area, men, if you're listening. Dad okay, listening. this is actually very interesting. Your lady area is a certain pH to obviously keep it clean. Your lady area. To keep it <laughs> your, oh what do you God. call things? Like your fufa. I don't know whatever you call them. Your fufu. Um, is a certain pH to keep it like bacteria free? Yeah. Same. Your skin is a certain pH mm. to keep, and like mm-hmm. when your sweat makes it's more, it's it. more acidic, isn't it? Um, yeah, I yeah, think it's so. more on the acidity to keep it bacteria Scale. free. So then, if you like change a pH by putting like a pH of a different pH shower gel there and change pH, you're gonna get bacteria will grow. But also, when you're having sex, like a man this is, is a different a man is a different pH than you. So it's like, man's skin though. No, but your skin has a pH on oh, it. Yeah, yeah and like your sweat has a pH mm-hmm. in it. So sometimes like your body will literally reject a man if he's just you're just not compatible. Like if he's so not that's why for you, you probably always get UTIs, the yeah. whole lot, you know. Because your body is rejecting that man's pH, so he just ain't for you, like chemically and stuff. If you're always getting UTIs, so before you get into a serious relationship, go get a pH test. Yeah, <laughs> pH testing, pH test yourself. <sighs> And um, yeah. it's like your body almost, and most of the time when you start getting UTIs from a guy and then it turns out he's a fucking dickhead anyway. So like your body was trying to tell you before you even knew. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, what was I was going to say something else about the pH. I think that was it. Your body rejects the male because he's not your, See the, he's literally not for you chemically. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've actually heard about that somewhere. I heard about the pheromones or something. Now, I don't know, I'm not going to butcher this. I'm not even going to get into it, but like, we know from smelling each other's pheromones if we're like a biologically compatible partner. Yeah. In terms of like what you have Genetics, is what I want. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're like healthy and stuff like that. Yeah, like pro- like in a primal state, like we would pick our partner based on like their survival, like how good they survive mm-hmm, and stuff so mm-hmm. that we have, ge- we breed, be- we have kids with this person and we can breed a strong, yeah. Where like did child and stuff. It was on some podcast. So Probably really um, Girls Bathroom. No, no, it was no. like, uh, up Scientific there like one. I think it was one of Stephen Barrett's podcasts uh, I could yeah, be making that like, up I know yeah something. so if you start getting UTIs after them just start asking yourself a few questions <laughs> yeah. be start being honest with don't yourself don't use any shower gel yeah start being honest with yourself <laughs> yeah um, I think even those lady products aren't meant to be the best hey, what, was the one? what was that called Fresh. Fem Fresh is not Fem Fresh Fem Fresh is give yourself a UTI for seven weeks fresh or I can speak from experience. Yes. Okay, will we read out yeah, our... Read out? I got to read out for change. Our red flag repellent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fuck. Beatbox. <laughs> and we had a talent show at our... We had a talent show at our um, course and... Everyone was like doing talent, like singing or dance, whatever. And one of the girls was like, Aileen can beatbox. And the girl came over the microphone to me and was like, beatbox. I was like, fuck off. Oh I cannot fucking God. beatbox. Was she joking? She was obviously joking. Oh. But then they came over to me with the microphone on my face. And they were like, okay, go. And I was, and everyone was looking at me. And I was like, I cannot beatbox for the oh, life like, of me. <laughs> yeah, because you can actually relatively beatbox for some weird, strange reason. I learned it in stage like, skill when I was like, I learned it in stage skill when I was like. Do that one, 12. It's like a Coke can opening, like, that's the ick right there, guys. Yeah, go right on. there. Jeez, I'm not showing this to your boyfriend. No, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, For our red flag repellent this week, somebody said, which relates back to our first segment on attachment styles. Mm. I've been with my boyfriend about six months now, and we've broken up nine times already. With loads of exclamation marks. Is she a cat? Nine lives. Like, what? Nine times already. No, That's sorry. like twice in one month sometimes. He always has some silly excuse like he has to focus on work or that he feels like things are going too fast. Then after a few days, in brackets, usually after me making contact, we get back together. It's kind of like a boy who cried wolf at this rate and I almost know not to take him serious if he breaks up with me. Even writing this message, I feel like I look stupid for taking him back every time. But I do love him. And when we are together, we get along so well and love each other a lot. Any advice on how to deal with this, if it happens again, or should I just walk away and call it quits? Thank you. X. That's a little bit of a toughie there. But, like, nine times a bit of a joke. But, like... Nine if, times is taking the full complete. Yeah, I would walk away. But it's also, like, <laughs> you walking away is probably going to even trigger that avoidance even more. But then again, that's not your problem. You need to worry about yourself. You yeah. know what I mean? 
That is fucked. Nine times. So, yeah, he obviously, like, from the sounds of it, sounds like an avoidance. So maybe if things are getting too stressful in his personal life, like work, he's like, right, I just can't focus on anything right now. He's overwhelmed. He's overwhelmed. So then he, like, wants to avoid, like, the relationship with you because he thinks, like, he he thinks he's going to get rid of the discomfort from from his work by breaking Mm -hmm. up with you Mm -hmm. when, like, you are not the problem, you know His what I mean? homeostasis probably in his life would be when he's so independent, doing his own thing, and yeah, it could be the stress of work or whatever Homeostasis else. is balance, yeah, by the way, sorry, if you don't the balance know. that he's, is like when he's in his own little world, maybe work and stuff like that, and a relationship does add an extra thing for you to split your time with, but mm-hmm. you're not the issue, your relationship's not the issue. It's probably when he's getting overwhelmed, even he in balances his head. balances everything, yeah. Then the quickest thing for him to do is see you later. And also... It's not personal, but it's also not on. And he obviously has wounds there. Mm. And when you're in a relationship, you could be like, not purposely at all, triggering those wounds, like sticking your finger in some of those wounds. And like, he mm-hmm. doesn't want to deal with them. Like, do you know? So if he has like um a trigger of, what could be an example of this? He's a trigger of, like, I don't know, people, like, an abandonment trigger. So, well, like, avoidance. Mm-hmm. What would you have? Avoidance would be, like, they fear intimacy. So, say if he, so say his if you, feelings get him really strong for you, he'll find yes. a problem with you, and then he'll be like, oh, it's just not working out for me. I can get something better, like, all the time, all the time, all the yeah, time, until be, there is nothing there. You yeah, know what I mean? exactly, because you're, like, pushing in on his wound of intimacy. So, you're, like, maybe he's fallen for you, and then he's, like, so you're sticking in the finger into the wound of intimacy and then mm. he's like, actually, do you know what? It's not, I actually don't even need this because the, like, he's not dealt with the... Because being in a relationship with someone means like having being a team and relying on each other equally and that's not something that person is ever used to doing. So that's a, like unfamiliar ground, unfamiliar territory. That's scary. Mm-hmm. for them because they're so it's a blessing and a curse. They're so independent which is great for them but then it's also too independent where like the other person, they're emotionally unavailable. That's what it is. Yeah. If they, you always feel like there's something missing. You're always like, you as the partner feel like there's something missing. You're like, you feel a disconnection, but you can't put your finger on it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, why do I feel this way? But it's because they're emotionally unavailable. Emotionally unavailable. Like, it's like they're a not getting that kinda. deep into their emotions. Even if they are like in love with you, it's not madly But no love. matter what, exactly. They A lot of them feel like, like you said, that that triggered something to me there they feel like they're incapable of ever fully loving. Mm. It's quite sad, actually. It's, be- well, it's because it's they're like, there's like something really else inside it. It's if there's uh, something else inside them with like, they can be if they deal I with I feel like shit. if you developed a relationship, a developed an avoidancy attachment style, maybe from being in a relationship, it wouldn't be so deep. But it's like, say from a child, if you have an avoidancy attachment style, you could be like, I feel incapable of ever loving so much. Mm-hmm. So deep. And like, you might see it in movies or your friends or stuff like that. And you're like, oh, I don't feel that way. Mm-hmm. But it's really just your avoidance the attachment style taking mm-hmm. over. Yeah. You know. So, the girl's like, should I walk away? Like, I would for your own, mm. to save your own you view on relationships. Ta- ta- yeah. Uh, anxious, sorry. To save your own view on relationships, I would walk away yeah. this time. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, you could give them the tools, but like, look, like, I respect you, like, I respect you, and I want you to get better, and I love you, so here is some, like, stuff, and if he wants to, like, look into it, and here's the deeper, book attached. Yeah, here's the book attached, and, like this is something you need to read and then because otherwise it's going to follow him his whole life and it's not going to be you it's going to be someone else you know what I mean so and then for you to save like Warren said like don't let it taint how you view yourself and how you view relationships it's probably best that you just walk away because nine times in six months is pretty hectic that's really not on yeah and like he obviously has a lot of work to do and a lot of times people with an avoidance attachment style it's really I mean it's good to get therapy for everyone but Mm. particularly for them to teach them to get to the root cause of where this yeah. came from, and, and then to show them that's to all reprogram it is. their yeah, views like say on relationships. They could be like stuff. marriage means danger. Marriage is marriage you're means in absolutely fighting so much because that's what his parents did, mm. and they could say like getting too close to someone means they're gonna pack their bags and leave because that's what mm. he thought his parents were madly in love, and his dad just walked, his mom just walked out, or like they had an unhappy marriage, or yeah. like you think you're trapped if you get married, and, and that's the belief that's always in the back of that person's head, so that's the belief that's driving every action the they're doing in their relationship, yeah. you know what I mean, like, okay, it's getting too close here, ring-a-ling-a-ling, fucking leave, yeah, you know I mean? it's, like a, it's like your subconscious is there for your, the one that keeps us safe, and is our survival, so mm. like, when the subconscious, like, sees the danger flags the red flags so the subconscious has like a seed of like marriage means danger mm-hmm. so then when you mention the word marriage the subconscious going bing bing 
danger, danger. And then he's going to just yeah. be like, okay, to avoid this, this, if he's not aware, he'll go, to avoid this, to avoid this discomfort, I'm just going to leave because. Or if you try to have like an intimate conversation or a deep conversation with your partner and like they laugh it off all the time or like, mm. you know, it's, it's like the fear of They intimacy. don't want to hear like, it, yeah. They don't want it. They don't I mean, I feel like a lot that, of you know? people are like that, like, you know. Yeah, so it's raining. It's raining now. <laughs> but anyway, so give him the book attached. You get out of there ASAP and listen to the start of this podcast where he explains some I stuff feel like as if well. he had not broken up with you nine times in an ideal world and was open to you about worked. the fact. At the start, if somebody is completely oblivious and they don't know that they're this and you bring it to their attention, it, be, it can be kind of scary. But then it can also be kind if of reassuring because, then, yeah. oh, it makes sense why I do certain things. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm not, not broken. I'm not broken. So. Yeah, for your own good, leave in this situation because he's broken up with you nine times. But also maybe, like Aileen said, bring it to his attention and whatever he chooses to do with affirmation is up to himself and you've done your best and you can leave. Happy, head held high, get out. Namaste. Um, But yeah, and we'll get on to our last yeah, segment. Beauty in the mundane. <laughs> my favorite one is like fuck no I actually don't mind so what's you can go first because I feel like I just gave my whole beauty in the one day in this um, morning or this, that's well, right, this podcast yeah <laughs> on Sunday I went it was actually a lovely lovely day it was so sunny and it's the weather's getting so much better here and it's really yeah. uplifting you it feel is, so good God. because the sky you can plan things now blue and sunny when you wake yeah, up yeah you can plan things now whereas like on the weekends for some reason it would always be raining or like mm. we'd want to go on a trip and it would just fucking rain but anyway first mm. world problems um we didn't value like you know, yeah yeah um i we decided to get up early we went on a lovely beach walk we isn't orn and her boyfriend by the way yeah me and i mean <laughs> um and went for a gorgeous coconut on the beach then we had a beach day and just chilled had pizza for lunch and i would never do that not even because yeah, it's pizza for a, lunch a gives like childhood vibes doesn't but it? just because it's, it was so out of my normal mm-hmm. i had pizza for lunch middle of the day on the beach we had two coconuts because i was that dehydrated stop it now it was just lovely and she's so tired and i ate some bathed for like three hours and i got a severe headache afterwards because dehydration. I, I was that dehydrated yeah, i burnt my scalp it was great and though. the girls getting like, my hair washed yesterday and it was really sore yeah it was the perfect sunday Yay. You know, just like chill, nothing extravagant. Yeah. But I mean, it is. But was out of your ordinary routines that triggered like, like nothing extravagant. It is extravagant. But yeah, yeah. but it was out of your routine, and it was like um, so it triggered like a different kind of feeling because you're not you're used to the same feeling every day because <laughs> you're known, you're known past and your predicted future. Yeah, and my boyfriend didn't wear. He was like, I'm gonna be grounded and not wear shoes, which is not unusual over here. So we went to the beach and we parked the bike ages. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> And he had to walk with his bare feet on the, the black sand. tarmac. On the sand, like trying Aww. to get from times to where we were. And people, the bike. I've literally he seen was, people like, screaming, like, <gasps> I have literally seen people burn the soles of their feet off. No, literally. Because the, the ground is so hot. I did that before in El Cabron. And uh, yeah, we had to go buy him Javianas, like flip flops. Where did you buy them? In the Javiana shop. Where is that? In Batablanga, near Mason. Oh, cute. <laughs> it was great. I was fucking pissed at myself. Like, I couldn't even move. I had like these shoes on, and I was like, just walking. <laughs> Needs to give him pee back. I had to drive the bike up to him. He's on the back. <laughs> <laughs> it was the biggest ick ever. Yeah, she sent me videos and I was getting ick watching it. Love you, Orn is my oh, friend. Yeah. But anyway, um, sorry, I don't know how I said that. But anyway. No, but no, no, yeah, go on. Yeah, I, mine was just my whole course. I already talked about it. It was yeah. amazing. Like, was there any particular moment that you can put your finger on? Maybe the, the exact dancing... The whole thing was Talent just show. the whole thing. Like, well, you're only led one. <laughs> no, like yes. Even for our graduation, we did this like really yeah. cute. Oh yeah. Acti- we had a graduation in the rice fields with the swings and all. You could that go on the so swings cool. and everything if you want, and it was just magical. And then we did this activity where we all stood in like facing each other like line, like two a pair in pairs, like in in a line, and then. You know, if you hold your hands up and someone goes in between the hands, like under the tunnel, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. And as we went on, I like one by one, we went under the tunnel, and our t- classmates, um, whispered in our ear really kind things about mm. us, but not about like what people were like. You're a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> people were like, <laughs> "You're so strong," or like, "Thanks for sharing your happiness." Like all oh. just like the sweetest things. Like I was, and I I don't really cry, for some reason, I don't actually cry that much, but also. On the course, I didn't really cry that much. I was emotional at times, but, like, up and down and stuff. But I didn't cry. But that almost made me cry. 
So that was close. <laughs> I welled up. No tears, but yeah, I welled up. Yeah, that's so cute. So it was just, the whole experience though was just bloody amazing. And I, I know that's changed my life, like already for the better, mm-hmm. you know? And it's up to me now to take it. Honesty. Yeah. It's up to me to take it, like, and make what I can and, like, integrate it into, like, my daily life, life here, mm. which today, to be honest, guys, being real and raw, found it a bit hard to be, like, whoa, like, coming from, like, one extreme to other, but also then trying to, like, trying to use you're try- like, kind of nearly trying to cling on to that. You're like, oh, like, how can I keep this? And, like, I want to be this type of way here as well, you know what I mean? So it's just adaptation Just about, again. yeah, adapting yeah. and integrating back mm. into society. There is, yo, like... Yeah, there's yoga I can do here and stuff. I just want to take, like, that version of me and be it here. But it's, like, having... It's being so strong in your own internal environment and having it... Like, so not allowing the external environment to shake your internal, which can be very hard, Mm. but it's a practice. Think like a monk. Have you ever read that book? On and off, yeah. Yeah. Um, So you can bring it, like, his thing was, like, he wanted to... He didn't want, like, he wanted didn't want to be a monk, monk, but then didn't actually want to do, like, wanted to bring the way of life to normal life. Yeah you know which is yeah like a little bit harder but it can be done and it's mm-hmm. just about becoming so strong inside that nothing can shake you on it's the because outside. there's things like in our life now that yeah just like social media yeah. your gossip phone. like your phone hustle and bustle hustle and bustle like foods that you maybe don't want to eat but for convenience sometimes you just have to eat them when you're mm-hmm. out and stuff and you're just like oh but when i master it guys i'll let you guys in on the secret of how i did it should be like Eckhart Tolle Eckhart Tolle Anyway, so we're going to wrap it up here. This will be the last podcast. See us never again. (laughs) For quite a while (laughs) because we did explain why. Um, It's a little bit sad. But we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, like we might do online. If that's something you guys want to hear, please actually just... We just don't want to like... Um, bombard you with shit content <laughs> yeah we don't want to not shit content but we don't want to sacrifice the quality of yeah, our but what I'm gonna we're gonna try figure out a way to make it sound better and even I didn't like I mean we, we worked what we had last time but we might be able to like blur the background and just like completely yeah just put so our faces onto we're something. not gonna say like goodbye for the next 10 the next eight weeks eight weeks but we might figure it out, but it's if you guys goodbye, have any easy. suggestions of things that you'd like to see while well, in the meantime, or if you s- still want to hear like a podcast, send us validation. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're anxious. <laughs> please, please let us know. Um, yeah. But we hope you enjoyed this episode and the previous episodes. And if there's any that you've missed, please go back and listen. I mean, yeah. they some well, there's have, 33, so yeah, <laughs> they have some valuable content in there somewhere. No. I, oh my god, what we've been doing this for a year. Oh, also, it's our freaking year anniversary. We've been in this for a year, yeah. It's our year. Happy New Year. We did take one a little break, though, in the middle of Sunday. Well, we've been doing it for a year. But we, we sat in the studio a this year This Serotonin Sisters the 12th was a year March, old. It? it was a year old two March. days ago. So yeah. happy birthday to us, sister. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And there's only 33 episodes. To you. Yeah. Well, we have 52 episodes. We can real And you know what? Well. We were actually going to start it in june 2021 so yeah anyways we are where we are but yeah we are we are we're where we're supposed to be and we are where we're meant to be and we trust our path and you should trust yours i feel like that gives me a lot of clarity sometimes guys when i'm freaking out it's just like surrender inhale exhale surrender and just surrender to the present moment and just trust that the universe has your back. Everything's working out for you. And you are right now, no matter how discomfortable, discomfortable, how uncomfortable or how comfortable you are, this is where you're supposed, you're supposed to, be. to be. And when you trust and release that and let go of clinging. It takes away all the anxiety. And stuff, the anxiety so. might, you might get a moment's peace from it or a few days peace or a forever peace if you just continue to relax and release. So let it wash So thank you for my yoga class today. I didn't lose my <laughs> Do you know that song? We just said you're good. Catch and release. Don't ruin it. Catch and release. <laughs> yeah. Listen to that song. It's um, so good. But yeah, thanks for coming to yoga class yeah, today. Thanks for how, holding the space for me. Yeah. And we will. Can't wait to be able to do a headstand. Yay. Can you do one actually? Yeah. I can do Not on the tiles in my apartment. We <laughs> will see you in the yeah, next, see you in the next episode. One, whenever that is. Lancia. See you later. Bye.